Hello everyone and welcome to a very short video. I'm going to discuss in this uh, in a couple of minutes the four characteristics of sound that we have seen in class that but you may still be wondering about um, their specific application in our classes. Uh, so the four characteristics of sound I have taken those from this book uh, by K. Kaufman Schellemai. It's called Soundscapes, Exploring Music in a Changing World. Uh, it was published a few years ago and it's a very useful um, resource for exploring music other than Western music. And why is that? Because um, the theory that we usually use for music, the tools and the methodologies have been created to deal with Western classical music and in particular with um, academ academic music or classical music. This is because the, um, in universities, usually the only music that was uh, studied and taught until the beginning of the 20th century was uh, the Western music, the classical Western music, Beethoven, Schubert, Tchaikovsky, etc. What happened is that during the 20th century, Western academics started to realize it was a little bit before as well, but in any case, in the 20th century, we started to see an, um, the um, broadening of, of uh, the, the conception of music. And we started to be uh, actually in the 19th century and even before, but in the 20th century, this other music started to have a place in academia and in universities. What is this other music? Well, world music, for example, and that is already, uh, that gives you an idea of the, um, we will call it Eurocentrism of our perspective. The world, world music is any music that is not European or Western music. But even in the um, Western world, uh, there were musics that weren't supposed to be studied, that they, they weren't considered interesting enough or relevant enough to be studied. And that is the case with folk music and popular music that we don't see in history of music books until the 20th century. Uh, and um, the phenomenon is that in these days there are more and more scholars that are more interested in popular music and world music than Western classical music. So in a way, it's, uh, things are, are sort of balancing. In this book then, by Kay Kaufman Schellemai, she starts talking about these four characteristics of sound, these four descriptors or categories. And I would like to use those in our course as well to describe and to approach the music that we study. In this very short video, again, some examples of, of these four descriptors, of these four characteristics, and I'm going to use my, my guitar so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about in, uh, in, uh, from an um, uh, original sound perspective. <laughs> okay, uh, so um, we, we'll start with quality. What do we mean by quality? Quality has to do with the uh, so the, the source of the sound and we may even um, discriminate between the um, vocal and the instruments. So th those would be two different sources for the sound. When we talk about quality then we, uh, we are trying to describe the, the specific, the, the specific um, elements in a sort of sound that allow us to identify it. And um, in class, I think I mentioned the voices. So uh, how, how is it possible that you hear a voice and you know it's your, your friend's voice or your mother's voice or your neighbor's voice? Because you've already identified all those voices in your, in your brain, basically, because we hear with your ear, but everything is pro processed in our brains. And you know what a, a, a specific qualities that voice has. So, for example, if I go to 
um, my guitar, if I use my guitar, if you listen to this, um, that you know it's a guitar because you already have this information in your brain you know it's different from uh, a piano a trumpet percussion these are this is a sound that it's made with strings vibrating uh, a sound that has has a very particular qualities and that allows you to identify it as a guitar if I sing on top of this um, well, I'm not going to sing, <laughs> but when you listen to uh, a piece of music, you are able also to distinguish between what's coming from the instrument and what's coming to the voice. And that is also because as humans, we pay a lot of attention to the, the sound of a voice. We are able to identify nuances and, and um, very, very uh, small details about somebody's voice, voices. So we have the, the aspect of quality, quality of sound. Uh, we have a guitar, one type of sound, and a voice, different type of sound. Even if we go deeper in the guitar, we can listen to different qualities of sound in the same instrument. For example, in, on the guitar, if I, uh, talk like, if I uh, play like this, in the, um, on, the, on the mouth of the guitar, we have a certain quality. If I play here, even though it's the same note, it's different quality. It feels like as if it is more rounded, uh, and it has to do with the physical qualities of the sound. I'm, going to go, I'm not going to go into that, but it's it's the um, it's the study of acoustics. But the same note, if I play it here. The quality of sound is different. So let me show you again. From here, different qualities. Pitch. What do we? What are we talking about when we say that uh, we're describing the pitch? The pitch refers to the variations of frequency of a sound and again this is the field of acoustics um, so if i if i play a scale i'm choosing certain notes that go up in pitch then i can do it uh, going back downward down And you have a sort of scale, that is why it's called a scale, like steps that go up and then steps that go down in pitch. And you can also use pitch to talk about the register. So how uh, low a note we can play, for example, on the guitar. That's the lowest note we play. It's an E. Sometimes in some pieces we even, we may use the D. But that is usually as low as we go, that low D. And how high can we go in pitch? Okay, so if uh, the open, the highest open string is that, but the highest note here on the neck of the guitar is this. But in some pieces, we even go up to here. Or, not many, because it's very difficult playing up here. But that gives us uh, an idea of the register in pitch. Very low, very high. In our bodies, we also have a certain pitch that it's connected with our voice. So I talk in a certain, certain pitch all the time. If I'm nervous, I'm going to talk in a higher, in a higher pitch because my 
my vocal cords are going to be stretched. If I'm very tired, my pitch is going to go down. Okay, so that is pitch. We covered quality, pitch. What about intensity? Intensity, it's very simple for you to understand. It's like the, uh, using the volume on any re uh, recording or play playback machine, the quantity of sound. And uh, the guitar, for example, is an instrument that has a certain intensity, but it can't go higher than, uh, I don't know, let's, let's like sound like... Something like that, a very uh, strumming or fortissimo, and even at, and in some instances, it's, it sounds sort of harsh because that's the the, um, the highest that I can go in with intensity. And uh, I have I can play very very soft, very soft, and then I can combine intensity. So when I'm playing a piece like the one I play in the beginning, I'm. Uh, I'm sort of mixing the different sounds that I'm doing with the guitar so that you can hear the, the melody. And on the accompaniment, I'm going to go do it with a softer in intensity so that you can, uh, so that the melody stands out like. And the bass also, it's another important component. Oh, my, my lower was in D. So um, listen to the different intensity of the notes. I can modulate the intensity from the notes uh, if among themselves and also in general. All right, I thought you, uh, the system had crashed. Okay, that's intensity. And finally, duration. Duration concerns anything that has to do with the length, uh, with the length, the, the relative length of sound, the pace of a piece, the um, duration of a piece, so anything that has to do with time. Uh, for example, in this piece, when I'm, I'm playing these um, notes, I'm using a certain pace that it's uh, it's the, um, the field of duration. Uh, also the sounds are different. Some of them are longer like my basses. Other are shorter like and then in combination we create we modulate time using using different uh, lengths of notes. Okay, so that is um, a very basic and very straightforward um, ex examples. Those are very uh, straightforward examples of the four characteristics of sound. And um, that's all from me today. Uh, now you can try and use these four categories to talk about any kind of music, in particular the music that we are uh, examining in our courses. Thank you and have a nice day.